Is there ever a way to keep the destructive potential of nationalism in check? Let me talk for us just a second about the about why there's a clash in the United States because you're or in Europe over this kind of nationalist politics. What it what it involves because then it'll be easier to talk about how to, how to keep it in check. What you get in the modern economy in this kind of post 1970s economy uh, is a division, a social and geographical division. Uh, where you get extremely prosperous metro centers, but largely finance, electronics, high tech, uh, and at the same time, uh, small towns, mid-sized towns, Hazleton, Pennsylvania, Erie, Pennsylvania, Akron, uh, that are suffering. Now, think about the people who live in them, and think for a moment, let's talk about the people who live in the metro centers, like New York City, San Francisco, Washington, D.C., where I'm from. David Goodhart, this British uh, uh, journalist, has a book called The Road to Somewhere, and he describes the difference between somewheres and anywheres in trying to explain Brexit. And I'm going to put that in terms of nationalists versus cosmopolitans. Now, cosmopolitans in the United States aren't people who were disloyal to the country. Uh, who hate America. I mean, there are always people like that, just like there are you know, people who still might belong to the Ku Klux Klan, but we're not talking about the, the extremes. Uh, but there are also people who have many different associations and interests and identities. They're a university professor. They're, uh, uh, they have a medical practice. Uh, they belong to clubs. They have a family with kids who were very successful. They have many different kinds of identities to fall back on in addition to that of the nation. Now, if you go for a minute, if you shift from you know, Washington, D.C., and you go about 700 miles to the west, you know, you'll run across towns where people did once have a very clear identity. They worked their lifetime for a certain corporation or business. They belonged to a union. They lived uh, mostly in cities, not in suburbs. They had a corner bar. They had their teams, and so, et cetera, et cetera. Now, uh, wh what's really happened and what's created a lot of this division, social and cultural division, is that for people like that, the nation becomes all important. It becomes much more important than it does for the, the uh, un let's say, for the university professor at NYU or what have you. And for those people, it becomes a kind of be all and end all. When the guys, uh, you know, the NFL guys don't kneel at the foot, uh, uh, don't stand up for the national anthem, that's a really big deal. They're not going to watch the, the game anymore, even. It's a, other things that don't, again, that don't make sense, I think, to cosmopolitans, but that, that are very important to the left behinds. Guns. You know, I, I did a, I spent an afternoon in a suburb of an industrial uh, town in the Midwest uh, interviewing uh, Trump people. And I, I don't do these focus groups, you know, where you have a list of questions and stuff like that. I just let people talk for, and we just talk for, for, you know, a, a long time. And I was amazed how much guns came up. Now, you know, why is that? They, they you know, they want to go hunt. There were not that many of them were hunters. Guns is part of the home. It's part of the safety of the home. It's being able to protect your family. It's a way of life, again, that uh, they see as under attack. It's a part of their identity. It's a part of what, it's, what it is to be an American. Religion, the same thing. So you have this kind of complex of values, of sentiments, that are very important to people, but aren't necessarily as important to other people. And what, what's happening now in politics and what, what worries me a lot is that among the, let's say, cosmopolitan group, there, there's a kind of uh, Manichaean dismissal of these people. You know, they're all, e we're getting around to your question. They're all evil. They're all white supremacists. But in fact, you know, again, 
uh, people are complex. There's a lot of different sentiments swirling around us. It's not, uh, you know, you, you live in these fancy places. You're not immune from the same kind of occasionally racist thoughts uh, or, or any of these various things. So it's, some of these people voted for Obama in 2008, 2012. It's a question of what comes to the surface at a particular time, what sentiments are, so, are aroused. Trump's brilliance was exactly dramatizing those particular sentiments, that there's a threat to the way of life. It doesn't have to be that way. There are, again, there are economic issues, there are different issues that people appeal to. But uh, again, I, th I think that, that what's happening now is that we have a politics that really is divided, very divided on a cultural level, and it's hard to see the differences, but, but the, it, I think it's very possible to break through them. It's just, again, well, is, that's the main question. Is yeah. there any prospect for reconciling these two visions of America, Trump's and cosmopolitans. I mean, I think that's what we're all well, sort of wrestling with. Yeah, right? sure. I mean, the, the, there is a very basic issue that of Americans feel about economic security. And, you know, it doesn't matter whether you, again, live in, live in Akron or you live in uh, now, Silver the, Spring. With the market starting to go down in the last two days, do you think that's yeah. going to change the Right. And I mean, it, even if you look at the dynamics of this election in the last, uh, oh, two or three months, in the beginning of the election when the Democrats were really doing well, and it looked like the Democrats might take the Senate as well, the health care thing was really coming to the surface. And it's still very important because that's an issue, again, that cuts completely across. Uh, now, unfortunately, what we're having is we're going to have another election that's about Donald Trump. It's going to be, a, I think, a rep, right. it's going to repeat uh, the 2016 it's a ref, yeah, election. Referendum on him. And it's going to be a, a, about either how wonderful or how egregious he is. Uh, and I think the Democrats will do a little better this time because uh, particularly women voters are going to be much more in an uproar than they were in 2016. But it's still not going to get us to a point where we can break through and where we, we can start to recreate the kind of social coalitions that we had, you know, 40 years ago, 50 years ago between the bottom of society and the middle of society. I mean, the Democratic Party today really looks a little like an hourglass. You know, they got poor minorities and the poor, and again, obviously a lot of minorities are middle class, upper class, but again, a concentration of people at the bottom and then upper middle, a very strong among uh, college graduates and particularly people with advanced degrees, professionals, uh, and a lot of the middle, what used to be the base of the Democratic Party has gone over to the Republicans. So we have this weird kind of clash in the country and, the, and that's, the, uh, that, that's the really the, the problem we have politically. And from my standpoint as a Democrat, the key is to try to bring back the middle. Mm -hmm.